In this lecture, we want to look at impacts and how we're going to use impulse and momentum, angular and linear now, in order to solve the equation of impact. A couple of things we want to keep in mind. All forces along the line of impact will be considered. But we're going to assume that no forces act for any time period of consequence along any other line than the line of impact. Now, if this isn't true, then we cannot conserve momentum in those directions, so we have to keep that in mind. But we'll try to keep things as simple as possible and just consider the forces between objects along the line of impact. We did that the same way in linear momentum case as well. Along the line of impact is what we're going to consider the normal axis, or the NN prime axis. We want to keep in mind that we are still going to have this coefficient of restitution, and we're going to make use of that. So we worked with coefficient of restitution in the last examples that we did with linear momentum. We're going to do them again here with angular momentum. Keep in mind, u represents the velocities of these two objects. Could be more than two, but we're going to consider only two objects in most of our collisions. u represents the velocities after the impact, and v represents the velocities before the impact. Notice again, it's just b minus a, and then a minus b. So reverse the two objects order as you do the subtraction. And also notice we only consider the velocity components along the normal axis. Okay, so here's a real good example. We've got a bullet coming in here, and it's going to come in and it's going to strike this steel plate at location C. The center of gravity of the steel plate is right in the geometric center. All right, the mass of the plate is 30 kilograms. That's a given value. The radius of the plate then is 400 millimeters. However, the impact takes place at distance H below the pivot here at the top. So h is equal to 700 millimeters. We know the velocity of the bullet previous to the collision is 210 meters per second, and that's in the minus k hat direction. Notice your axis z is coming out to this direction, and the bullet is going in that direction. Consequently, the negative aspect here. We also know the mass of the bullet is 15 grams, which is 0 0.015 kilograms. What we're looking for is the angular velocity of the plate immediately after the bullet becomes embedded. Okay, so the bullet strikes the plate and sticks to the plate. And we're also looking for the reaction at A, because what's happening here is the, the plate is going to want to move forward, and it's going to be stopped by the pivot here at A. We also know that the time of impact is 1.1 milliseconds. So we're going to use impact on part A, and then impulse and momentum, specifically linear impulse and momentum for part B. Okay, so let's just take a look at part A for starters. Initially, the bullet has angular momentum. We're going to find all the angular momentums about point A. So the bullet has angular momentum before the impact. And that angular momentum is going to be R cross MV, just like we defined earlier on in the course. So the radius in this case is not the radius of the plate. That's actually going to be H. So it's going to be 700 millimeters, which is 0.7 meters. And then R is in this direction. MV is at 90 degrees. So I don't even need to worry about the cross product, per se. But keep in mind, it's going to rotate in that direction. So that's going to be in the positive i hat direction, as far as vectors go. So I'm going to multiply this then by 0 0.015 kilograms, and then 210 meters per second. That's the velocity. So there's the angular momentum previous to the collision. And since there are no other forces that are going to cause moments to take place, there are no other moments in this problem, because we're pivoting around A, and A is the only other place that there are forces. There are no other moments, and so well, the angular momentum of the system afterward is going to be HMU. That's going to be the angular momentum of the bullet plus I sub A, that's the rotational inertia of the plate about point A times omega. But omega will be the same as the velocity of the center of gravity of the plate divided by the radius of the plate. Or more precisely, U will be equal to H times omega as far as the bullet is concerned. Because the bullet's going to have the same omega as the plate, but it's a distance H away from point A. So that's going to be h times omega. Now if I consider an axis parallel to the x-axis, 
The moment of inertia about that is one fourth m r squared, but I need to add to that using the parallel axis theorem m r squared. So I sub a should be five fourths m r squared. You might just check your book to make sure that that's okay. Okay, so this becomes m h squared omega squared plus I'm going to use big M for the mass of the plate. Let's call that big M up here. And then there's a 5 fourths R squared. All of that is known times omega. And this omega over here is not squared. So all of this is going to equal that. Since the only thing I don't know in the lower equation is omega, I can solve that out for omega.